Welcome everybody, it is Janelle Cooper and I am here today to teach you something I'm so, so, so excited about because I learned a new stitch in Tunisian crochet. Um, don't let that scare you, it's a super easy stitch and I am madly in love with it. Like I don't just have a crush on it, I'm literally sitting here thinking about all the different things I can make with it. My process is when I find a stitch I love or I find yarn that I love, I just start crocheting with it. And then the ideas of what I'm gonna make with it comes after, right? So I started making this square, thinking in my mind that I might be able to make a cute poncho out of it. Um, as I fell in love with the stitch and I fell in love with the yarn and all of that stuff, the, the picture of the actual poncho and what it's going to be formed into my mind. But I was actually a little jealous of my poncho because I already started thinking about what a cute hat I could make, what a cute scarf I could make, the cutest blanket ever. Like I am very excited about the stitch. So hopefully you guys will be too. So here's what we're gonna do. The, the video here is gonna teach how to make this poncho. Um, but in the process of this video, hopefully you will be just as inspired by this stitch and you'll be like, I can make, I mean, anything you can make with a rectangle, right? Scarf, uh, beanie, blanket. I mean, uh, there's so many videos on my channel of things that I just make with rectangles that you could totally make with this stitch. And you're gonna love it because it's awesome. Then I'll tell you why in a minute. It's just gonna be a square that is 30 inches by 30 inches. Now, those inches, <laughs> I did not measure my body to see if this worked on my body. I just let the yarn speak to me. So I went as about as long as I wanted to go for it to cover my shoulders, my back, and my chest. Um, and it's it's gonna be a cropped poncho. That was always in my mind. I wanted to do something kind of cute and fun and cropped instead of the traditional poncho, right? So I knew it was gonna be cropped. This is gonna be very cropped. So I'm adding on a little bit on the bottom and the top, um, which is actually the back and the front, to make it a little longer if you want. So my original thing was 30 inches. That just happened to work out so that the way that this yarn, I just let the yarn kind of speak to me until I got to the halfway point of where the colors change on it. And I was like, that's 15 inches. So it's gonna be 30 by 30, but you, you have the ability to change that to match your body. So if 30 inches is way too short, you do, we are gonna add onto it. Um, if you wanna make it longer, you can, we're gonna add a little ribbed edge on there. Um, so know that that's coming, um, but you could just go longer. And you could just let the, um, the colors tell you where you wanna stop as far as width goes. So I'm gonna show you a picture, <laughs> my rudimentary drawing, of what I think it's gonna look like on my body, okay? So bear with my stick figures. I'm not like a big artist or anything. But so this is, you're, you're gonna be able to take this poncho and you're gonna be able to wear it four different ways. And I'm gonna show you in a second. So this is how it's gonna go. We're actually going to put a hole in the middle. It's just a square. There's gonna be a hole in the middle and then the, the weight from the poncho will actually pull it apart so it'll make it kind of a V-neck right there and it'll be striped like this. It's gonna be right underneath the boob line, right there, right? Um, but you could add on, and I think I will for me, add on just a, like some, um, I think I'm gonna put ribbing or something on the end. This is actually pretty ribbed, so I don't know if ribbing is the right choice, but we'll find out when we get there, right? Um, so we can add on a little bit of length and then we're gonna add some fringe. So it's still gonna cover everything. So if you're feeling um, insecure about your waistline, if your waistline doesn't look tiny like that one, mine doesn't either, um, and you're feeling insecure about it and you want something a little bit longer, we can totally make that happen. If you're not feeling insecure about your waistline and you think that it's the most, it's the best part of your body, <laughs> yay for you, <laughs> but um, we can actually turn it so that it goes this way. So the fringe is hanging off the arms and the slit in the middle is right up here at the neckline. So it's gonna be straight across. It'll be really short in the front. So you can wear it two different ways. Um, also though, this stitch is fully reversible. This is my favorite part about this stitch. So I love this rainbow. I love these colors. This yarn was given to me by my friend TJ, um, I think for my birthday a couple years ago. She got it on like super, super sale. And so she got herself a, um, a couple of skeins and she made herself the um, campfire cardigan. And then she gave me a couple of skeins and they're huge skeins. And she, um, 
she was like, I can't wait to see what you make out of it. And all I could see in my head was the campfire cardigan. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to match. I want to do something different. And now finally, what's it been like two years? And now I finally have a new idea. So, um, so these are huge. This is what I'm using. It's called Karen Big Cakes. Um, they are humongous and they are, how many yards is in this? 603 yards with this cake. So we're actually only going to use this much. So I'm still, I'm still going to have this much left at the end. Um, and I have two of these. The cool thing about this though, I love these colors, but you know what I love? Maybe even more. Look at that. Isn't that just like, ah, I love it so much. I might even wear it more with the white on the outside with the color showing just through. And or, then I will on the, I don't know, I don't know. It, it'll just depend on my mood, I think. But the great thing about these arms is that they're kind of wide open and then you can see the inside. And I've always loved that detail about, you know, really nice pieces of clothing where the inside has a different fabric than the outside. I just love that detail. It's just one of those things that you probably don't notice unless you're looking very closely. Right now, I'm at about here and I'm gonna teach you how to get to here and then make that hole and then come back and just keep on going, okay? She says that not knowing how she's gonna do that, but we'll figure it out as we go. I'm gonna show you how to start the stitch, how to continue it, how to make that hole, and then I'm just gonna let you make the square, right? Once the square is made and you've tried it on your body and you know exactly how it's gonna work, then we're gonna add the details and then we're gonna be done. It's gonna be a very, very simple project, but it will be a little bit time consuming. It's not something you're gonna make in 20 minutes. It'll take a little bit of time. You need stitch markers. You need a needle. You need scissors. And you need your yarn, which for me is this um, Karen Big Cakes Yarn Inspiration. Thank you, TJ, for giving that to me. For the inside, I am using just plain old Red Heart Super Saver. I actually got this, I got this as a gift, so. And then I got this for 64 cents, this huge jumbo thing, a couple years ago when it was on sale at Walmart, right? So you know what else I got? Is a ton of this camo, also 64 cents. And I bought a ton of it and I was like, what am I gonna use that for? Cause I don't wear a lot of camo. I have used it to make pumpkins. I still have like a ton of it. I'm thinking maybe a blanket. How many men in your life would love a camo blanket, scarf, hat, any of those things, right? Like we're always struggling for what we're gonna make for the men in our lives that's not too girly. The most important thing you're gonna need is Tunisian hooks. Now, let me talk to you about these hooks real quick because I'm gonna link in the description the video of the the person who I saw do this stitch because I don't know if she, I don't even know what the name of it is. I'm calling it the reversible Tunisian stitch. Um, but I don't know <laughs> if she found it somewhere or if she created it or what, but I'm gonna give credit where credit is due and there will be a link to that video in the description of this video so that you can find how she did it. When she did it, she used a double, um, it was like two, the same size end on both ends of a cord on a Tunisian hook, right? To make it, to make it Tunisian. Um, because you need the space in order to put this across because we're gonna, we're gonna be building it this way and it's gonna like, it's gonna crunch up on there, you'll see. So, but I didn't have the same size hook and I didn't wanna buy a whole other set of my favorite set of hooks. So what I do instead, and you'll see when I'm doing this, is I just take the, it comes with all these different extension cords and two ends. So I just take this apart when I get, so we're gonna load it up and then once it's done being loaded, I'm gonna push it over the cord, take this apart, replace it with the stopper on the end. Oops, if I can do it right. And then come over to the other side and put this hook back on the other side. And that's what I have been doing for this whole thing. This will make sense when you actually see me do the stitch. But the reason I'm telling you this is that one set of these is amazing. I love this set. I use it all the time. But you don't need to buy two sets, you know? And you don't necessarily need both ends. You don't need both ends on it. You can just do it with one. And just um, as long as you have a stopper and a way to move this hook to the other side, then that works. So if you do have two sets or you do have a set that has... Um, the same size on both ends, then go for it, right? But, um, but this is how I am doing it. Look at how there is no curl at all. No curl. I didn't do anything special. 
to make that happen. It just automatically happens. So I think the biggest issue with Tunisian crochet is that because of the way the stitches are made, they're tighter in the front than they are in the back, which makes it curl this way. Super frustrating. And you're always trying to work around it by giving it like a backside or whatever. It's, um, or you're like trying to go up like four needle sizes and you're, it's still, it still curls and it's super frustrating, okay? This one, no curl at all. So my favorite stitch, like just hands down. I would start the stitch, um, I'm just gonna do like a little practice square. I'm gonna, I would start the stitch with um, the color that you want to be the outside edge. So whatever this edge is gonna be. For me, I'm gonna use that white on the outside edge just because I like how the colors are framed in by it. Um, you can do whatever you like on it. So, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna start with a slip stitch or a slip knot, start with a slip knot. And then you're just gonna like normal, you're just gonna chain however, whatever the length is. It does, there's no certain number of chains you need on this. So it can be anything you want it to be. I'm doing white on white, sorry, I apologize. Hopefully you can still see it. It's better than doing black yarn, I promise. Okay, so we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm just gonna go up to 15. Okay, so 15 chains on there. This is a brand new skein, so it's like, doesn't wanna give me any yarn. When you take a chain where it's open on the front and you turn it over, there's a bump right there. That's what you're trying to go into. And you're gonna go into all of them, including, I don't think we do the first one, because that's actually part of it. So we're gonna do this. Go into the back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, leave it on the hook. It's the only difference between Tunisian crochet and regular crochet is that it's, it's actually kind of a cross between um, crochet and knitting in that you load the piece, you load the stitches on the hook first and then you take them off, right? That's what we're doing. So you just leave them on there. Go as loosely as you can. Don't, don't be tight on these, the tension. Um, because that's it kind of it makes it hard to get into that loop later if you go too tight Okay, final loop they always say to go through like a knit stitch So that the edge is nice and clean so you're gonna instead of doing going through the back loop You're gonna go through this whole chain like it's a knit stitch so that your edge goes straight up. Okay, so, and also so it matches this edge. So that's how, see how loose that edge is? This is a practice piece, but just remember to tighten that up when you first start because I always have that problem. My edge, my front corner is always loose like that. I always end up having to fix it later. But, so, here's what we're gonna do next. So once everything is loaded on there, you have the chains across and the load onto your hook. This is when we're gonna switch it, okay? So when, you're, when I'm doing the poncho, it's gonna take up this whole space and it's gonna be actually way more than this can hold. Um, and then you're gonna just kind of slide it this way, take the hook off. I only have two ends, I'm always afraid I'm gonna lose it, so I always put it back, I'm so diligent about it. Okay, so then put your end on there, right? And then you're going to move your hook down to the other side Move your whole thing down the other side, and then you're gonna turn it, which we don't usually do in Tunisian crochet. We usually load it on, go back, load it on, go back. But we're gonna do the um, return stitch in a different color, so we're gonna turn it from this side. So now, this is when you pull in your new color. And this is this is a two row repeat, or it's, it's one row repeat, but it's basically take it off, load it on, change color, take it off, load it on, change color. So it's it's just a repetitive action. So we're gonna go ahead and start with a slip knot on this side. And you're just gonna pull that through the first loop. Okay, just like that. And then you're gonna take the working part of it, get rid of the tail and you're going to yarn over and go through two all the way across. 
So yarn over, go through two. This is essentially the chain that you made at the beginning, right? We're just doing it through these pieces. So it's like chain load, chain load. The only difference, the difference on this one though is the way that you load it. We're gonna load it in a weird place. <laughs> it's not gonna be like a simple stitch or any of that stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna do something weird. Okay, all the way chained off. This one's always gonna be loose, just pull it tight. Um, always when you get to the end there, just pull that tight. So then what you're gonna do to load it back on Usually, Tunisian simple stitch, you'd either go through the front, or if you're gonna knit stitch, you would go all the way through, or if you're gonna do something fancy like a smock stitch, you're gonna go through two. There's a bunch of different things, ways you can do here, right? But for the reversible stitch, you're gonna go through the horizontal bar, right? And you're gonna go through just the top loop of the horizontal bar, like that. So yarn over, pull up a loop, leave it on the hook. Okay, so same thing all the way across. Horizontal bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, all the way down. How easy is that? That's the whole stitch, guys. <laughs> That's it, you just do that over and over and over. If you are afraid of Tunisian crochet, I would highly recommend that this be your first Tunisian crochet stitch because it is so darn easy. Okay, so when we get to the end, <clears throat> usually when you get to the end, like I was saying before, you do a knit stitch into the final stitch and it, what it does is it creates this like, basically like a chain that goes up the side we're not gonna do that on this. We're gonna go into the horizontal bar before the final, what would you call that, loop, I guess. And it's really easy to do when you're working with two different colors. It might be a little confusing when you're all doing it all with one color and you might just like the texture and not the reversibility of it. Um, so you're gonna go through that final loop. If you try to do another one into this final piece right here and do your knit stitch, you're gonna end up adding stitches, so don't do that. So now we've got, we've loaded them on. Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna push it down. Every time it's loaded on here, this is when you do this. Push it down, take off the end, or take off the hook, replace it with an end, go to the other side, take off the end, place it with the hook, and then push it down and turn it. Okay, so now, we're gonna pull the white back through. So, and you can make sure when you turn it, I like to put my yarn, like my white on one side and my colored yarn on the other side so that it's easy for me to know which way to turn it so that I don't end up twisting it. Um, you can do whatever, you know, I'm sure you everybody has their own way of doing that, but um, that's how I do it. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna pull this pretty tight so that it's not loose on the end there, and you're going to pull it up and go yarn over and go through one loop, okay? Then yarn over and go through two, all the way across. This is the greatest stitch ever. I am just crazy about this stitch. It is so easy to do. I mean, easy to do like in the car, easy to, I mean, really anywhere. It doesn't take a lot of, you don't count, there's no counting, there's none of that. It's just, just do a very simple crochet stitch. I love it. Okay, so this is super loose. Just take the working piece and pull it tight. Yarn over and go through. You won't, next time you'll pull that tight is when you come back and you pull that color back in there. We're not gonna do that until the next row. So load it back on. Okay, so you're gonna go through that front loop at the top on the horizontal bar. 
pull up a stitch. What's super important here is that you don't skip this stitch right here. It's very easy to go, oh, I've already done that, so I'm gonna go over here. You're gonna end up losing stitches if you do that. So make sure you do that first one. What's great about doing two colors is very easy to see where the stitches are, so you won't mess up as easily, right? So there's, you've already got the loop right there. You're gonna go right there after that first loop. And this actually counts as the stitch for this loop. This, this loop right here counts as the stitch for that first loop. I hope that makes sense. Okay, pull up a loop all the way across. Oh yeah, I definitely think this would make for a nice blanket. Or even like, you don't have to do white, you could do like gray, or you could do like an olive green or something. And um, it would be a very masculine looking piece of fabric that you could make into anything. You could make it a scarf. If you wanted to do long ways, it'd be super cute scarf, or you could do um, a really neat blanket with it, or a beanie, which a beanie would be really fun because it would be reversible. The brim, we would pull it up and be reversible, or you could do an, a separate brim on it if you wanted to. What would you do with it? I wanna know what you would do <laughs> with this stitch. Okay, so we've come to the end. I don't wanna skip ahead. So this is the only part that I would ever find confusing, and that is this is the final stitch. You wanna go into the vertical bar before the final stitch. No knit stitch on the end. This is what we're doing back and forth. Just like that, okay? So once again, it's all loaded. When it's loaded, you know it's time to switch your colors. So you move over here, take it off, I, can, I even got to the point where I could do this without looking because <laughs> I was doing it so much. Um, let's get it on there right. There we go. Okay, push it down and turn it. And I just make sure that I turn it so that the one color, one yarn stays on this side and the other color stays on the other side. Okay, so this is super loose. Don't worry, because you're gonna pull it tight. Not super tight, like don't kill it, but um, you know, tight enough so that it matches everything else. This is my beginning loop, which is always super loose and I always have to end up fixing it. Um, that's just my way, I just am like that. I've tried to fix myself, it may never be fixed. Okay, so you just pull through one loop, the first one is one loop, and then you yarn over and go through two on all the rest of them. Okay? You can do that, right? I mean, that's like so, so easy and so fun. And just like, you don't get bored. The thing I love about working with color changing yarn, like those big cakes yarns, is that there is nothing more exciting than watching that yarn change. It is just so fun. And then just to see the texture that happens when, you know, when you've got it combined with another piece of color, or another color of yarn, okay? Same thing, we pulled that a little bit tighter just so that it doesn't get all wonky. It's still gonna come loose by the time you get back to it. And then just pull up a loop, go through that front bar on the top piece of yarn and pull your loop up all the way across. Imagine too, like let's say you're doing this camo and you wanna do um, a solid color behind it. You could change that solid color. So this part could be striped while the camo is like ever changing. I just, so many possibilities. People always talk about getting, um, uh, losing their crojo, right? Um, losing their inspiration for what they wanna make next. I never have that problem. My problem is I have too many ideas and then I don't know where to begin. Like I don't know, what do I wanna do next? Like there's so much to choose from. And then I try to write all my ideas down into a notebook and then I forget like where I left the notebook. Like it's, it's crazy around here. My brain's like that. Okay, so there you go. That's what it looks like. Isn't that so cool? I just love it. So pretend like you just pulled all of this off. Now I'm just going to reload it on. Go make sure you go through that first one. and then reload the color on, vertical bar. So this ends up making like a, like a rib stitch, kind of. 
almost exactly like a rib stitch. It even stretches like a rib stitch. So this could be your Tunisian rib stitch. Up to this point, I've always used just a regular crochet rib stitch, and I'm, maybe I would like this one better. Um, I like the end of it better. So we'll see. You might end up, you might see me using this a lot more often in the future. I did look online because these, my, like I said, my friend TJ gave me this yarn. And so I was like, and people, a lot of times people want to use exactly what I use. Um, you don't need to do that. Like all of this, this Karen Big Cakes is just a size four yarn. You could replace it with the jumbo stripes in Red Heart or really any variegated yarn. Um, so if you can't find it, then um, just remember, it's just a size four worsted weight, plain old, nothing special yarn. You can replace it with anything. I'm using a, um, my hook, that I am using, which gosh, I probably should have told you at the beginning, is a six millimeter hook, it's a J. This yarn asks for a 5.5. And usually on Tunisian, because of the curling, I tend to go up like three um, sizes on my hook so that to try and keep the curl down, but that's not necessary with this stitch. Um, but I did use a slightly bigger one because I didn't know what I was signing up for when I started doing this stitch. And um, this is the biggest one I have on this set. So that's why. But you could use a J hook on this. You could use probably an H, an H or an I or a J on this and be just fine. So you're going to keep doing that until about the middle. For me, that's going to be about 15 inches. And it's going to be right smack in the middle of the gray. So I'm gonna keep going. This is what it looks like when it's all loaded on here. See how it's like kind of crunched on? Um, that's okay, don't worry about that. It's a little bit like knitting in that you can just crunch it all on there like that and it'll be fine. And then you just push it over the side and then you just switch it out. Okay, so just keep going. Just keep doing that until you get to about the middle of your poncho. For me, that's gonna be 15 inches and it just happens to work out that it's going to be about halfway through that gray, right there. Do that, get to the center, and then I'll show you what to do at the center. Okay guys, so I have finished halfway through, and uh, it looks like it's gonna be a little bit wider than 15 inches, because um, I put it on and I was like, um, this feels wider. So it's more like about 16 inches wide, um, which is fine, because it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't have to be square. It just happened to work out that way when I did the, um, when I figured out the, the uh, colors. So moment of truth, um, I've come to about halfway down the gray. So when we switch it, we're going to make the little hole in the middle for the head part and um, or neck part. So what I've done is I put it on and then I marked kind of about where I want those holes to be or that hole to be. Um, but I also turned it to make sure that it wasn't so wide that it was gonna like fall off my shoulders because that's like super annoying, right? It's okay if it falls off one shoulder, that's kind of cute and sexy, but if it falls off both shoulders, that's just an annoyance, right? So um, so then I kind of originally went with like seven inches on the end and I think I upped it to like eight just to make sure because I have very narrow shoulders. But if you have wider shoulders, you can probably get away with whatever. I would just definitely say, try it on, you're just gonna have to lay it over like half of you, kind of mark where you want the V to be on it, and then turn it and make sure that your shoulders are gonna hold it up where that hole is. So that's the most important part. So we're gonna, we're gonna do the pull through on the white, and we're gonna make sure that these are even, and then when we come back with the white, yeah, I think we're gonna pull through on that. <laughs> and we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bind off this section, the middle section, and then continue on. It's gonna be weird. It works in my head. I don't know if it works in real life. So this is how we're gonna find out. We're just gonna do it, because that's how I learn, is by just doing. Your center is gonna be wherever you decide your center is gonna be. So you may be using completely different yarn than me, or you started it in a completely different spot than I did. So wherever you decide where that center is gonna be, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do when you get to that spot. So we're going to put that on there and then pull these through. So pull through one. By this time, you probably could do this in your sleep. Okay. 
Okay, so just pull all the way through to the end, and then when we get there, we're gonna discuss what's gonna happen as we pull them back onto the hook. So the next thing you wanna do before we do this next part is you just wanna make sure, because what I did was I kind of measured where I wanted the neck hole to be. So funny, because it looks like it's right in the middle. Um, on one side, and then I just like folded it in half, and then I put them right next to each other, right? But that's not like super strategic. I wanna actually count these stitches and make sure that it actually is in the middle. So I'm gonna go through and count these really quickly. 30 on that side. 27, 28, 29, 30. Oh my gosh, so close. Oh, actually, I think I'm right on. How funny, okay. And then what you wanna do is you wanna count the ones in the middle, because the ones in the middle is gonna determine how many chains you're gonna do. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have 44 stitches in the middle and 30 on each side. The number of stitches is going to be different depending on how long or how short you made your piece. So, um, so just know 44 for me in the middle, that's how many chains I'm gonna do. Coming back over, we're gonna do what we normally did. We're just gonna load up these stitches just like we normally would until we get to the pin or the stitch marker, whatever you chose to use. So here we are, we got to the spot. Once you get here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna still load it on, but instead of just loading it, you're gonna go ahead and um, pull it off just like that. And you're gonna do that all the way across. This is, this is called binding off. If you are a uh, knitter, you know this term well. Hold on, I'm gonna move this guy so he's not in the way. So this is what you do in Tunisian. It's just like, kind of like knitting. It's almost the same look even. You're gonna pull it up and then pull it off. Don't do these ones. These ones are still on there, but those, those last two were, have been bound off. Maybe that one all the way till we get to the other pin. It's basically just a slip stitch, right? And then when we come back the other way, the bind off is actually gonna be gray. So it's gonna be like half and half, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna like that, but I can't think of any other way to do this. So we'll see how that looks. It'll be on the opposite side though. So it's gonna be interesting. We'll see how it turns out. So go ahead and do that bind off all the way till you get to this pin and then you're gonna go back to just loading it on the hook and leaving it on the hook. So you're gonna have this big gap in here. Um, and then I'll show you what to do after that. Okay, so we've gotten over to the other side. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do just a regular, we're gonna do the last bind off right there. And then this one over here, we're gonna go right, and that's like a, the one side that the pin's on. Um, we did the bind off on. This one though, I'm gonna just go ahead and pick up the stitch and leave it on the hook. And we're gonna do that the rest of the way. It feels like it's harder to hold on to now that you've got this big gap here because I'm used to just holding onto the cloth. Um, so that might take a little getting used to, but you're only gonna do it for one row, two rows, so um, you'll, it'll be easy. Okay, final stitch is always the one right here before this little tiny loop. It's always a little harder to get into. Okay, so now we've got two pieces and in between we have this open gap, okay? So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and flip it like I normally would. <laughs> this is getting really big, it's a little harder to handle in front of the camera. Um, yeah, okay, cool. And then we're basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull through all of it like we normally would, but when we get to this gap, we're gonna chain 44, okay? So we're gonna go pull it through, pull it through, pull it through, pull it through. Those are really just chains that are going through the middle of those loops, right? And then we're gonna do 44 for the gap, so it matches this section right here, and then we'll pick up these again. So 
So the reason why we're doing these chains here is because it's the back side of the neck or the front, it's the other, the right side or whatever, how you want to think about it. If this was a sleeve though, like you would just continue on and just go straight across and then that creates the hole for the sleeve. Just, you know, for future knowledge of if you're ever doing it, something like that. But, um, so right now I'm going to chain 44 in super fast time. Okay, so that's 44. Before I connect it though, I'm gonna just double check and make sure that that is how many stitches we want because you don't wanna accidentally add or gain stitches. You want it to be exactly the same. Okay, so I actually ended up with 46, um, which is, I can actually redo it. I think it's because of the way when you pull the chain through, you actually lose one. Um, so, I'm just, all I need to do is add two more chains and we're good to go, right? So one, two, okay. Make sure it didn't get twisted. I don't really think you can twist it. Yeah, okay. And then just go back to where you were and you're gonna pull this one. Go ahead and yarn over and pull through two. Okay, and then you should be able to do that the rest of the way across. I am totally winging it, guys, so hopefully this is going to work out the way it works out in my brain. We're going to find out on this next row. It's like a cliffhanger. Okay. Now... Just load them back. And when you get to this point, when you load it, you're gonna load that back bump just like you did at the very beginning. Fingers crossed, this is gonna work, right? Okay, so here, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this just like we at the very beginning, the beginning chain, and we're just gonna go right into that back bump and pull up a loop. So I may end up doing um, just like a white rim around the um, inside of this. We'll see. Maybe I'll love it just the way it is. Okay, so I did notice when I got to the end here that I did turn it and go through that front loop again. Um, and that just kind of happened naturally. So there'll be a chain on this side and a chain on the back side. Interesting. We'll see how... We'll see how it works out. It's like watching a, a novel unfold <laughs> before your eyes. Now would also be a good time before you get too far to double check and make sure that you have the same, again, the same number of stitches on one side as the other. I'm gonna, I've already checked it. Um, I will double check it again once we get to the other side and it's laying nice and flat um, because it's hard to check it when it's like all rumpled up like this. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. We're gonna flip it. And this will be when we decide if we like it <laughs> or not. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I finished like, what is that, six more rows? One, two, three, four, five more rows just to make sure that everything was gonna work out okay. And it looks like it is. Um, the blue is starting to come back in and I got one, two, three rows of gray and one, two, three rows of gray on here. So it's about as centered as it's gonna get, I think. 
I think I kind of like the neck just the way it is, but we'll see. I won't know until I actually like try it on. So from now on, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna continue on and I'm just gonna center the colors. So I'm gonna keep going until I have one row of gray on this side and then we're gonna um, bind it off on the end, on the white part of it. Um, so, and then we'll try it on. But what I, what I suggest you do as you're going through is just try it on periodically just to make sure that this neck hole isn't too wide or too small, um, that everything is kind of fitting right for you um, so that you don't get so far along that undoing it is a big deal. So, um, so from here, just go ahead and continue on and I will meet you on the other side. One eternity later. Okay guys, it's been a long time. <laughs> I've actually been off doing other things for like a week or two. It's been crazy, but um, today is Halloween, so I'm home. I've got everything set up and ready for the kids. So I'm gonna take this moment to try and finish up as much as I can of this really cute project. So um, I did have to undo the part of it. I, did the, I didn't redo it on camera because I still did the same exact thing that I did on camera. The only thing I did differently is when I tried to make it symmetrical as far as the colors went, um, I switched it at the middle of the gray, which was here. And it just made it this side really, really long, like way down past my waist, which was not, as you know, the goal, um, because we wanted it to be cropped. So I decided to go back, take it to the middle of the red and not get too excited about how it's not um, symmetrical color wise. So, um, which is kind of cool because that means you actually have like, I mean, let's not get too crazy, but six ways to wear it really, um, because you can change the, which colors are in the front, right? So, um, but I mean, they're kind of the sim similar color. So I don't think it's gonna matter too much. So I went ahead and redid it in the middle. I was thinking about doing something around this neck part, but I think I like it just the way it is. So I think I'm just gonna leave it. And we're gonna do this row right here that we did before to finish off this white. We're gonna do the exact same thing to finish off the end so that it matches the first end. So it's that nice thick white on the end on both sides. So, cause we want it to be, you know, so they look the, the same. Whenever I'm working with large pieces of fabric, it's, I'm always trying to like fighting it sliding off the table because they're so big and heavy. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're technically done with this orange now because we're just gonna finish the white and be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim this end and then you can just um, go ahead and weave that tight. You know, you wanna pull that kind of tight. You may even wanna like knot it so it doesn't loosen up and then just weave your ends in using the back and forth method like we do like we did before, or hopefully I showed you that. If not, I will show you that in a second. Um, and it's been so long, I don't remember what I've covered on this video and what I haven't covered. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and do that final row and we're gonna cast off as we go. So just through that loop right there, like we did before, pull up a loop, go through this one. Now, if you wanna make sure that that end one is tight, it's probably a good idea so that it's not loose on the end there. And then um, go the same thing all the way across, just like we did on the neck. Sorry, actually you can kind of get rid of this now because we don't need it anymore. Have I said how much I love that hook set? I'm actually looking at getting um, the bigger one because now that I now that I have this reversible stitch to work with, I kind of want to do something with chunky yarn with it with the bigger hook. Okay, so just keep doing that until you get all the way across. When you get to the end, you're going to do a um, a slip knot at the end and then trim your end and then just weave your ends in. When I get done with it, I'm going to show you how to weave your ends in just in case I didn't cover it before. I'm on the last stitch. Um, we're just gonna go in here and grab that final white dash right there. Oops, try and get all the way underneath it. And then go ahead and pull up your loop and then pull it through. It's basically just a chain or a slip stitch, right? And um, just to kind of make sure it's secure, I would knot it again one more time, just one more slip stitch on there. And then, um, <laughs> Weaving in your ends on Tunisian feels weird, but it's really, really actually very simple. Oh, so I wanted to show you too. So there's that nice finished white edge there that goes with this one, so they match. 
and um, so it's nice and symmetrical. And let's see, we will go ahead. Okay, so weaving in your ends, um, it's actually gonna be really simple here because this is basically just a slip stitch or a chain, so we're used to that, but you're just gonna go in to these stitches, just like, you don't even have to go very far, just like, you know, four, maybe five stitches in there. Pull that through. And then you're gonna grab some other piece of yarn and then we're going to go right back through the way we came. And the reason why we grab a piece of yarn is to keep it from just going right back out because we're going to go back the way we came. And that back and forth of the yarn keeps it from working itself out. It keeps you from having crazy ends slip out later. One of my favorite blankets has crazy ends. Oh, did I miss a couple? Well, I think it'll be fine. Okay. I decided that I actually am going to change my mind and I actually am going to put white right here. Just I feel like it needs to be completed and it needs to be symmetrical with what's going on on the ends too. So what I've decided is I'm going to um, go ahead and just do one quick little line right here. And we're just going to go right into this so that we can continue this stitch right here. And we're just going to act like we're chaining into it. Okay, so just like pull up a loop and then do one chain just to kind of lock it, right? Then on the bottom of this loop right here, it's just one piece of yarn. I think you can kind of see it. Um, we're just gonna go right into there and we're gonna do single crochets. So if you do just a um, slip stitch all the way across, it's only gonna be a one-sided stitch and we definitely want this to be on both sides and we need it to be the same thickness as the other side. So I'm gonna try a single crochet and see how I like it. I think that's gonna look pretty good. So we'll just continue that all the way to the other side. And that should give it a nice, like, hopefully, a nice finished look on there. Okay, so final stitch, just this loop right here. And then I'm just gonna slip stitch into the middle of that just to make it look like it all kind of goes, hopefully, together. Well, maybe over here too just to kind of continue that line. See how that one's kind of sticking out? I think I'm gonna go over that with another slip stitch just to make sure that it's not like one red line there. Okay, see, that's how I do it, you guys. I just kind of wing it as I go. Okay, that is it for the edges. If you wanted to take this time to make a cool like mock turtleneck or something around it, I mean, go for it. I think that would probably look really cute. Um, if you wanna know how to do that, you could probably check my, um, my other poncho video. Um, I do a whole thing on how to do a really long turtleneck, but you could just do a short version of it um, to make it do what you want it to do. Okay, let's make sure that looks good on both sides. I think it does. Okay, so now let's do the edges. Okay, you guys ready to see the border I came up with? Ta-da! I really like it. <laughs> and it's so funny because I meant to hang tassels in it and that's why there's these loops here. But um, I don't think I need the tassels. I just tried it on and I'm like, I think I like it just the way it is. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. It's so easy. You're, just, you're, gonna, you're not gonna believe how easy it is. If you decide you wanna put tassels in here, you totally can. Um, but I think I'm gonna forego the tassels this time. I know, it's hard to believe because I'm such a tassel person. So I'm gonna show you how I did it. If I can remember what side I started on. I believe I started on the side, the inside. Okay, so we're gonna go over here. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our whatever color yarn that you wanna do your border in. Go all the way out to the tippy tippy edge just so that it doesn't have a weird bump right there. Maybe even go under these last two loops on the end of that stitch right there, okay? So under those last two loops, and then that's where we should pull up our loop, like that, then chain one, and then go ahead and do your first half double crochet into this little, this first white yarn right there. 
So half double crochet into that. It's just one little piece of yarn. It's not even two pieces together. There, and that's a little bit more square looking. Okay, so half double crochet into single piece of yarn on the very end. And just do that all the way across. Okay, goes pretty quick. So just meet me at the end of this row and then I'll show you the final row and then we're done. Okay, here we are at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go into that final, those final two loops, just like we did at the beginning. Just like that. And then I'm gonna chain one. I'm gonna chain two, I think. <laughs> no, I was one. I'm gonna chain one. <laughs> You'd think I didn't just do this. And then we're gonna turn it. And then in the same stitch that that chain one came out of right there, that very next one over, you're just gonna do a single crochet, okay? Then you're gonna chain two and do a single, you're gonna skip one and do a single crochet. Now, before I get too much further, that's pretty much how simple it is. We're gonna just repeat that over and over. But here's how I came up with it. So first I counted my rows and I had 96 rows, technically 97 because we started with the white one and we ended with a white one. So otherwise we would have started with a, or ended with a colored one on there. Um, so 96 divided by three, which was kind of what I was imagining having that tassel hanging out of there. Um, I forget what the number was, but it was an even number. It was 32, right? So basically there's 32 of these on there. That's how I figured it out. Now, if you don't have um, a number of rows divisible by three, divide it by something else. Do something like four or two or whatever. Just all you, you just wanna make sure that you have a piece right there. If it's not divisible, if it's like just divisible by two, you can literally just, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over one single crochet right there and I'm gonna redo this entire batch right here. So one single crochet, three chains, one single crochet, one single crochet, three chains, one single crochet. You could actually change it so that it's one single crochet, three chains, one single crochet, and then just go straight into the three chains and then one single crochet. So if it's divisible by two, <laughs> I think that might be our first trick or treater. Be right back. Okay guys, my time with you has come to an end for today. <laughs> I had to lock my dog upstairs because of all the trick or treaters and now he's upset and the door is ringing every couple minutes. So I just wanted to make sure you understood how this works. So you're just gonna go single crochet, three chains, and then skip one and then single crochet. And then single crochet in the next one, three chains, and then skip one and single crochet. All the way across. <laughs> My dog says hello. Okay, so. I'm down to the end. I went all the way across. I just did, oop, I missed a stitch right there. So that's the one thing you gotta look out for, just to make sure that you are consistent. I wonder, if, can you hear the spooky music in the background? <laughs> one, two, three chains, and then single crochet, and single crochet. So it's not gonna be perfect at the end. You're, uh, it is, skip one, and then go one, two, three, skip that one, go into this last one, single crochet, and to just kind of give it a nice rounded edge, we're gonna to go to the next one and just chain stitch or slip stitch right there. And then you can just do an extra little slip stitch to knot it. <laughs> Another trick or treater. And then weave in your ends, hang tight. Okay guys, it is done. Both sides are done. My ends are all weaved in, but they're or woven in, I guess is the right word. Um, but there is no way that you can tell what this looks like until I actually try it on. So I'm gonna try it on for you. Hang tight. Okay guys, here it is. Check it out. I'm actually really, really excited about this piece. So I've already recorded this end part before and I took pictures and I posted it on my Facebook group and just asked people their opinions and all that stuff. And um, I, <laughs> I'm redoing it because now I've had a chance to wear this for a couple of days, like off and on. We went out with friends the other night 
last night and I got a ton of compliments on it and I'll tell you how. Um, so this was originally the way that I had it in my head, right? And I love it, it looks really cute. Then I was like, oh, we can turn it this way. Also pretty cute, right? Like this is also really cute. And then my friend TJ, She's, you'll know her as Tamara Johnson. She's on the Facebook group. We've known each other for many years. She is a designer and she has a way of just seeing things. Like if we go to Goodwill together, she'll see a plate and she can make it into like this beautiful thing. And I'm like, how do you even see that? So she saw those pictures and she was like, can't you like turn it diagonally so the points in the front? And I'm like, I don't know. So I did, this is how I wore it last night. I can't even tell you how many compliments I got. So many people. And then one particular friend was like, could you make that for my wife? And just so you know, those of you who don't know me, um, I I don't make things to sell. I usually I'm like I make a it's like a one time thing. So I make it as a gift, or make it for my kids, or I make it for myself, and then I move on to the next thing. And that's because I my head is so full of ideas that I'm already thinking about the next three ideas, and I don't want to get caught up making mass production of one particular thing because my I just get bored, right? But I was like, I have a huge car trip coming up. <laughs> that would actually be perfect. So I'm actually gonna make him one for his wife. This didn't take very much yarn. It only took like part of one skein of the colored part and then like not even half of a skein of the white, like, like maybe a third of the skein of the white. So I still have plenty left, so I might as well make another one, right? So anyway, I'm very excited about that. Let me show you the other side. Original way, sideways, which I I love them all, I love them all. And then TJ's way, we'll call it TJ's way. TJ's way. <laughs> so, and that's what it looks like in the back. So I was afraid because of the, the V-neck that it would look a little bit weird having it be diagonal and it looks really cute in the back. So I love it and I got lots of compliments on it so other people love it too. So anyway, so that's six different ways to wear it. I'm sure there are others. You can probably spin this thing in every direction and have it look really cute. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed it. I love my new poncho and I'm looking forward to making it for somebody else too. And I hope that you share pictures with me of your ponchos and your color choices and you know which way you decide to wear it and all that stuff I would love to hear about it so go ahead and leave a comment in the video if you want to or you can come and join us at uh, on Facebook under Janelle's quarantine crochet and you can share all of that stuff with us there it's a great group of very supportive people and um, I guess I'll see you on the next video bye